Hey everybody, I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I want to take a moment to talk about the future of quote-unquote phone technology. Now, before I go on, I want to offer a note about my background. I have a bachelor's degree in computer science and work as a senior software developer. In my spare time, I enjoy developing desktop Java games to play on my computer. What I wanted to talk to you about today is the Librem 5 device from Purism. I ordered my Librem 5 device a few years ago, but after some delays due to the pandemic, I received my Librem 5 a few months ago, now in 2023. As someone who uses a Linux-based work machine for my job every day, the Librem 5 has been everything that I could have hoped for. In particular, I was someone who previously used Android devices, and I had believed that when I received my Librem 5, I would probably use Android and the Librem 5 simultaneously for some amount of time to wean myself off of Android. Uh, but shortly after receiving my Librem 5, for some reason, I got locked out of my Android device, which had never happened to me before, and as a result, I became sufficiently frustrated with the current phone technology landscape that I'd simply tried to live off of my Librem 5 for about a month. Forcing myself to use the Librem 5 all at once rather than a gradual transition meant that I had to learn how to use the Librem 5 device to connect to my proprietary chat system used by the company where I work, and also use it to unlock systems that require two-factor authentication, like Cisco AnyConnect VPN, which wants its Secure ID Companion app. I also had to learn to use the Librem 5 for the Microsoft Authenticator system, which was required of me by my employer. The Librem 5 is a wonderful piece of technology that is a functional device capable of placing calls to family and friends and texting over SMS. In that way, we can think of it as being similar to Android or an iOS phone device, but where it differs is that the system fundamentals are based on the idea that the user can tell the system what to do. If you're an Android or iOS user, you might believe that it's possible for you to make an app and that you can therefore tell the system what to do. Uh, but really, I'm referring to something different. Uh, when you make an app in a system out of your control, um, you're making that app as something that exists within a sandbox. Um, essentially, with something like Librem 5, uh, you are the sandbox. You know, the, the, the user is the one who is in charge of the entirety of the device instead of these individual apps that could be put on it. Um, so, now that I've put in the research to find open source solutions for Cisco AnyConnect VPN for the Microsoft Authenticator for my job, um, I'm able to unlock both of those systems from any device by remotely logging into my phone with a standard SSH login encrypted behind an SSH key, um, which is honestly probably a more secure login than the sort of bogus two-factor authentication systems that corporations are forcing on users anyway. If you can imagine it, when you do a two-factor authentication, you probably have to open up your phone and thumb through some app that you do not control uh, until you get some informational key and grant access to whatever the original system that you're trying to use is, in, is enforcing the policy on you. Um, and for me, if I'm sitting in a computer where I want to log in to do my job, I access the phone remotely from the computer without standing up, without needing to physically go to the phone, and then I generate whatever authentic, authentic, authorization key is needed or authentication key for my work remotely, put it back in the work system all at once while on the computer. Fundamentally, if you imagine a scenario where all of your computing devices answer to you and you trust all of them fully, then the two-factor authentication concept would be stupid and pointless anyways, because it's based on the idea of not having a cryptographically legitimate method for identifying yourself anyway, and therefore that two devices are somehow better than one because the first one might be compromised. When compared to the idea that you could just cryptographically have a, a functioning identity system, two-factor auth is ridiculous. Just don't compromise your devices. If you're already compromising your devices, then it doesn't matter how many devices you have because you're doing the computing technology wrongly. With that in mind, the Librem 5 also comes with a series of hardware switches, uh, maybe you can see those here on the side, um, that all physically disable uh, different parts of the system. So the top one there is the cellular modem, the second one down is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and the bottom one disables the microphone and camera features respectively. Speaking from experience, these uh, switches physically do work and disable the respective functions of the device. To be honest, a few months after having my old Android phone locked, when I decided to uh, go ahead and factory reset the old Android phone and uh, try to have that in parallel with the Librem 5, there was one morning where I was a little bit groggy and I almost reached down to my Android phone to literally try to turn off the Librem 5 cellular modem switch because it just seemed so logical to think, if I'm not using this part of the system, why don't I turn it off? And then I had to remember the Android doesn't have a hardware switch for that. Um, so with that in mind, because of the open source focus of Purism, while I waited for my Librem 5 to arrive, I was able to buy a cheap $200 handset and test the PureOS Mobile Fosh system. 
Uh, the cheap handset did not run nearly as well as Believe Mark 5, but it gave me the ability to preview the aims of the Fosh experience before using it. And what stands out to me is that because the Fosh experience is, has so much overlap with GNOME, um, from like, you know, the, basically the, the uh, uh, GNU desktop world, uh, I can connect my Libram 5 to a mouse, a keyboard, and a monitor, and then basically be getting the same experience as the GNOME shell, but as a desktop experience. And then if I unplug the Libram 5 and walk away, it's the same experience that was running the desktop, or it's the same system, it's the same underlying system that was running the desktop experience, and so I can take everything with me without entrusting it to some cloud or someone else's ridiculous sync paradigm. Um, as a demo of this, I realized that I can run a desktop Java game that I wrote to originally play on a PC from directly on the Libram 5. All I have to do is plug in this USB hub that I have over here. Now, if you want to see it, maybe I can try to do it live. Um, but basically, I plug in this USB hub, uh, which connects it to a mouse keyboard video, and then I just run this game that I wrote years ago. And generally, you know, with, with Android or iOS, there might be people who say that, you know, well, you could write your game in some way that would be cross-compatible with, like, Android and desktop PC or something. Um, but even Android changed all the Java libraries, so it's kind of its own ecosystem and typically would not support the full desktop Java APIs to let you just directly run some pre-existing code like I can do. So yeah, I'm going to try to spin my camera and let's see if I can plug in the Libram 5 and uh, play this game on it. Okay, great. So here you can see this is this is the actual Libram 5 device. Now um, down behind it here I have a dongle, so I'm going to plug it into this dongle which should connect it to a mouse and keyboard. Um, let me just move that on over here, uh, get that plugged in. Once I do that, uh, sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed so you guys can see it. Great. So now my Librem 5 is docked, and you can see that it's running um, right here plugged into this mouse and keyboard. And so what I can basically do uh, is go to the terminal app to run my game. Okay, great. So now I have this monitor, uh, which has the Librem 5 docked. You can see there's a mouse and keyboard that are also plugged into it. Um, and it plays this cool spaceship game that I made. So I can just go to the single player um, custom game. And so this is all my code I wrote, but I wrote this to be a desktop Java game. And this thing just runs on the Librem 5 right out of the bat because of this convergence idea that it literally is just a little computer in there. So I can just click start game. Um, it's gonna load for a second, but that's just my bad programming in the game. Um, yeah, here we go. So this is a turn-based game of spaceships. You can see I'm in the uh, build phase here right now. But, you know, I've got this kind of like smooth, slick stuff. You can see we got the parallax stars in the background and all this. And this whole entire little game world is all running inside the Librem 5. Um, you know, I could get my spaceship here and maybe tell them to like build some kind of little buildings, you know. Um, and I just think it just seems really fun that uh, I kind of finish turn on this game and go to like the next... Thing here you know maybe build some more spaceships but um yeah i just think like to me that's really cool that we can do this um i can take my spaceships fly them out to some outer asteroids you know uh let's see yeah and so as we go out to explore these different asteroids and different worlds you can see this game also has uh, a bunch of different sub maps we can fly around to and, and all of this, you know, with this, like, re reasonably good performance, um, you know, functioning systems and all that, is running right here on the Librem 5, just plugged in as a desktop computer. So, anyway, I just thought that would be interesting to mention that, um, kind of give this review of Librem 5, that I feel like this is what, what you would want in a phone in your future, is a, is a technology that... You carry it around in your pocket, that's like a computer, you plug it in, and then it's like a desktop PC, and it does what your desktop PC needs need to be. Why would the world need to be more complicated than that? Um, so yeah, that's my review of Librem 5. For anybody who wanted to be a naysayer and say, oh no, there's no way that game was running on your phone, I'll show you right here. So this is actually on the Librem 5 device's screen. If I... Uh, I might want to switch to the uh, rotating portrait and landscape mode here, but if I rotate the terminal, so now it's, you know, kind of got this rotated mode, um, and then tab up to, got a CD into the right folder, um, yeah, just, you know, change directory a couple times, uh, let's see. 
So again, like I said, you know, I know how to launch this game because I wrote it. And if you're somebody who didn't write it, then you wouldn't know to do what I'm doing right now. But that's okay, because it wouldn't be very hard to turn this into a clickable button on the app screen that you run there. I just didn't bother to do that, you know. Um, yeah, oh, I gotta, I gotta do one more, one more change directory command here. Uh, let's see, that one, yeah. There we go, now I'm gonna run this thing. And this just runs right on the Librem 5 on the, you know, the phone screen just the same as it did on the PC screen. Um, but I just, I think that's pretty cool. You know, this is not a game that I intentionally wrote for the Librem 5, it just works. Because it's able to run things that you ran for Linux desktop. It, it really just, it's like a hand computer, like how phones should have always been. And it's not an emulator, you know, it's, it's not a... Um, some kind of adaption. It's just the thing itself, you know. Here is my game of spaceships. Here is the little digital world. There you go. Same game. Runs right there on the phone screen. So yeah, that is my review of the Librem 5, and in my opinion... This is a way better device than Android and iOS, at least if you're a software guru type of guy like me, because it just feels liberating. It feels like, you know, yeah, I can make this device do whatever the heck I want, and it's just going to do it like a Linux computer. It's kind of like night and day compared to, like, Android, where it's like, oh, you want to SSH into Android? Here, install your little Termux sandbox or something so that you can... You know, tell yourself that you're doing what you want, even though we're not really going to allow you to do what you want. So anyway, Librem 5, that's great. If somebody tells you that Librem 5 was made by grifters and scammers, that's probably just the internet trying to manipulate your mind. You know, and if somebody tells you that they have a friend who has a friend who knows something, or maybe they have a friend who knows something on the inside about the Librem 5, that's the same logic that the U.S. government is using right now to say that, well, we have a friend who said that there's crashed alien spaceships and little green men in it, hidden in the U.S. government. So you got to decide, do you believe in that line of thinking? Do you believe in the aliens, or do you believe that purism is an actual functioning good company that makes devices like this? I guess I'll leave that to you. What do you believe in, little green men? Or Librem 5s. I sort of choose to believe in the Librem 5 because it's right here in my hand. If somebody puts a little green man in my hand, maybe I'll believe in that too. But right now, all I have is a Librem 5. So I hope you have a good day.